Wow. Hi, guys. Welcome to the 7 o'clock news. Sorry. This is episode 37 of The Weekly. And uh, with me, of course, this this week is our usual cast of characters. Starting off with Mr. Warren Bowman from BW1.com. How's it going, man? No audio. Uh, oh, wait. You're kind of there. No, I think I might just be hearing you. Is that the is that his mic or is that? Okay, I'm gonna mute my mic. Say something, Warren. No, I think I was just hearing him off of your mic. Why don't you just have him sit right next to you? You could snuggle up, be snuggle buddies. I'll carry the rest of the show. Hey, everybody, welcome back to uh, Board at Works. Uh, weekly podcast where we talk about tech and news and gaming and some really fun stuff well we've got a fun show lined up for you guys this it's week good. where we're going to be talking about uh pixel 2 xl okay. the pixel 2 yeah. electric boogaloo yeah. um what's going on with display gate there i know i've had a couple of rants so about just, oh yeah i guess yeah things right there for that kind of stuff um but google has an official response so we're going to be looking at that we also uh <laughs> Also going to be talking about some uh, Samsung Google rivalry, uh, Face ID rumors, especially some recent news coming from legit news sources about you know what's uh, what's going on with uh, Face ID and how it may or may not be more secure than Touch ID. Uh, we've got numbers on what iPhone repairs are going to cost for the iPhone X. I mean, ten. Um, and then uh, OnePlus 5T, we've got some insight on what's going on there. Uh, another thing that we covered on Pocket Now recently, especially with Oppo's recent release of the R11S, um, I think we've got a pretty good I idea or pretty good indication of what's going to uh, what's going to arrive for OnePlus's uh, flagship killer. I know they don't really call it that anymore. They, it's the never settle. They don't talk about killing flagships anymore because that was rude. So yeah, um, really, uh, really good lineup. And then of course, uh, hopefully you guys will be joining us in the live chat where we can pull some questions and have a uh, strike up a conversation. And uh, are we back? Are we through the magic of internet? Look at that. Yeah, I can. I can hear you. Look like dude, guys. This is way better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So we are back and we have a double feature here at uh, Board Work. So Warren Bowman, thank you, Juan, for kicking off the show. And can I, can I kind of get some little third action? No. <laughs> That's a bridge too far, Warren. We, we, we magically teleported you from your from your house over to Ennabongs just to help with, you know, uh, the hype late here. hangouts is. Yeah. Um, so, so I, I already gave a sort of a brief rundown on the topics we're going to cover. I think we could probably jump right into the Pixel 2 XL's display gate controversy. And I don't know about you guys, but I think we could make this a little bit of the uselessness of the week. I definitely agree. I think um, just kind of with the response to Google dropped and how they framed it. Um, let me just kind of open that up so we uh, I can actually read it properly and not misquote anything they said um uh oh, so you want me to read it i've got it up oh can you go ahead sorry i'm still looking for it yes uh it, it, as read in the voice of google our investigation so far has given us confidence that our displays are as great as we'd hoped they would be though we're also taking steps to address the concerns we've heard extensive testing of the pixel 2 xl display show that its decay characteristics are comparable to OLED panels used in other premium smartphones. The differential aging should not affect the user experience of the phone as it's not visible under normal use of your Pixel 2 XL. We understand, however, that it can be concerning to see evidence of aging when using a specialized display test app. So we've taken steps to reduce differential aging through software. We're currently testing a software update that further enhances protections against this issue by adding a new fade out of the navigation bar buttons at the bottom of the pixel screen after a short period of inactivity. In addition, we're working with more apps to use a light navigation bar to match their app's color scheme. The update will also reduce the maximum brightness of the Pixel 2 XL by a virtually imperceptible 50 centimeter, uh, oh, 50 candelabra per meter squared also known as nits, thereby significantly reducing load on the screen with an almost undetectable change in the observed brightness. 
<laughs> I don't know. So, I mean, like, the thing that's silly about this is it's just like Cameragate last year, where you've got a hardware problem, and then you're trying to throw some software at it, which I'm sure will make some of the situation better, but it doesn't really address the core issue here when I think a lot of us, myself included, as much as I'm loving my LG V30, I think a lot of us are concerned about certain QA issues coming from a particular manufacturer, um, which we don't see also resembled in the smaller Pixel 2. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. And one of the things for me, I'm going to be dropping my 72-hour review of the uh, Pixel. Um, is and I'll tell you off the bat is once I open up my Pixel to Excel, I did a quick Periscope live unboxing. Right there and then, I saw blue tint, straight up. So explain to me when you see blue tint. So how, how far off axis are you looking at it, or is it something that you can see when you're looking dead on? Um, so because I see a lot of color shift on a lot of OLEDs. Um, mine is almost the slightest. So if I'm holding the phone like this and mm -hmm. I have a white background on mine, once I tilt it just down a little bit, That's I can see I down. can see it already. That's not a great viewing angle. Yeah. So it's it's one of those things. And then there's also this kind of yellowish, you know, uh, discoloration. It's not as intense, but for I know the background is white. And I can compare it on my, say, my my desktop, or say uh, another device like the Galaxy Note. And this is just it's that off white color feel, so to speak, where you're like, uh, maybe it's creamish. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and and are you using any kind of adaptive color mode or anything like that? No, no, no. no there isn't an adaptive coloring mode really on here to be able to even do that. There's adaptive brightness. I know there's adaptive brightness. Adaptive oh, it's brightness. got a yellow right when you take it off. My but bad. like, but like the, the brightness when you when you turn it all the way up to 100, percent that's when you'll probably see the less amount of that type of tint. Mm -hmm. It's when you kind of go below that and you start hitting around. I would say um, probably somewhere a little bit above 50 or 60 percent. It is. Uh, it starts to kind of have that yellow tint. And then I also like like you notice the blues and different angles and stuff like that. Like dead on here, I'm looking at it, how you look at your phone, I can see yellow. I can I can kind of tilt it a little bit and it gets a little wider. It's just inconsistent. See. I wanna I wanna get my note real quick. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. Um yeah, it's it's just one of those interesting things that um to me, Google's answer, sorry, I was just trying to send an email to Sam. Um, Google's answer is annoying. You know, like, like Juan said it, you cannot use software to necessarily fix something that is a hardware issue and then tell us there's no issue but give us two year warranty and then say you're gonna fix it. Like that's the kind of, you know, they said it's not an issue, it's the same. And we'll talk about Samsung. It is, it's trolling. definitely some confused messaging there. Yeah. yeah, we'll talk about Samsung trolling later on because basically Samsung said, "Hey, um, fellas, this you know your your display just doesn't work." So to me, I so think the thing that I think is smart about that though is Samsung has to come to the table and negotiate, even if LG's QA isn't terrific. Vendors can go elsewhere to get other AMO, uh, other OLEDs now, and I, I I mean knowing LG Display because they're kind of a separate fork of LG Electronics, they're not yeah. like under the same umbrella. I think their ability to iterate will be pretty aggressive. Um, I, you know, I think we would all agree that LG's OLED manufacturing is probably two generations behind Samsung, but I don't think it's going to take them a full two years to catch up. Yeah. Um... There, there are issues. There, even the the statement for the, what they said for the uh, display is so engineer nerd driven responses. Nobody cares about lumens and and, and that and it's all the crap like that. So well, they're they're purposely response. sort of misrepresenting the problem there. You the know? rush response that they didn't bother yeah. pushing through their uh, their sort of their their. Uh, their people person for every, every, everyone on the team that actually translate that into actual proper English for everyone else. Um, that being said, uh, I, my other biggest issue here is when I actually pop, dropped my Pixel 2 first impressions video, how many people were just calling me a fanboy or saying 
that I'm making a bigger issue out of the display than what it really is. And Samsung went for, the best one I heard was Samsung went for more natural tones. I said, if you're using an OLED, what are you trying to go for natural tones for? No. Like that's just not what an OLED produces. And that, if you if they wanted natural tones, they would have went and asked LG for the quantum dot IPS stuff <laughs> that, that they were putting on the G4 and the, G, in the, in the G5. And then everyone would have complained about the uh, the, uh, the lighting bleed and made fun of the display because of it, and would have said that everything was dulled out because nobody really cares about how accurate the colors are on a smartphone screen. They just want the colors to pop out and look all right. ooh and ah and just boom. And, you know, they, they just want that. They want that you know, eye candy, and they could care less about anything else. And that's what the Pixel 2 display isn't doing a very good job. Does, any, does anyone know who? Um... Who was Nokia using for their OLEDs? I'm not sure, um, but I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, wouldn't have put a path it was probably Samsung in some way. So, so what I think it is, and we kind of had this discussion since Sam is here, is that uh, the problem is actually sizing of display in a sense, right? Um, the five inch AMOLED that is, is it 5.2 5. For, the, for the Pixel 2? But it's a 5-inch AMOLED display. It, it's a display size that Samsung's been doing for a while. It's a 1080p display. Yeah, so that is something they keep, I mean, production-wise, they can push out. Yeah. And I think that's where the problem is, especially now everyone's doing this, you know, dual size devices. You have, you know, one regular size, one uh, a different size, as opposed to a company who can come in and say, I want a five to 5.7, which is kind of the size that everybody does or has, Samsung can easily produce that, then you push in something that's a little off. So I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, but Sam, would you like to add or is your audio off? Uh, my audio's on. Okay. okay. So, uh, thank you, his audio's on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, that was indignant for me. Um, no, I, I, I totally agree when, when it comes to the, the the whole idea that you have to have two tiers. Uh, I think with this, it's very clear that if they just stuck with the in-house guys or the new in-house guys, they would have had a better overall um, experience for everyone, for a better overall consumer experience, right? Now they had to basically go to LG to make a bigger screen, uh, a phone with a bigger screen, and Samsung to make a, uh, a Samsung screen or the in-house team for H which is HTC to make the smaller device and the small device now is the one everyone's actually saying looks and feels better right so everyone has to start asking themselves a question if you're not a Note 8 and if you're not a V3 or LG V30 should you really have two sizes of phones and we're going to keep seeing this because now we're seeing delays on the iPhone X. We're seeing issues with the 2XL. We're seeing issues with people who don't really have an argument for making a second device or a bigger screen, a larger screen device. And it's what exactly are you trying to do? You know, and with the, um, with the 2XL, I don't know what Google's trying to do. I don't know who it's, who it's actually geared towards except for people with bigger hands. Well, a five plus inch display is well, pretty decent I, for people with bigger hands. I think the two oh, XL makes sense in that they've always had a two phone strategy and that there was one platform that they wanted to push as the more aggressive hardware platform. I, I mean, I think the two XL makes sense. It's it, it's but, just they, they shouldn't have gone with different manufacturers. Well, I don't think it would have even been that big of an issue if they had something unique at the two XL. Well, that, that was something. their platform to show off the new screen. Sorry, sorry. Oh, it's, it's... Now, hang on. It's screen. not like they went because it's not like they went to Samsung and got their uh, their smaller two by one display. Like they could have done but, that. Yeah. But I, I understand the, the, the need for making two devices is that there there are just two different uh, large user bases. There are people that like smaller form factor phones, and there are people that like larger form factor phones. Um, it, it, that's just kind of what it is. If you try to ignore one over the other, you're going to miss out on a large uh, possible user base for your device. So well, I, think that's fine. I, think, I think it's just that uh, if you're going to make these devices, if they need to all be from the same manufacturer or you need to have a deep hands-on in with whoever you're using. 
So if, if Google was going to tap another maker or whatnot, they needed to be just as hands-on as they were with HTC with the original, you know, the Pixel 2. I mean, I, I do hear you there, but I think we also have to look at it this way. I mean, going back to that point is, look, what were the sales breakdown between the Pixel 2, Pixel and the Pixel XL in terms of, okay, did the XL really do that much for you to warrant, again, making the second large screen device? And all these companies do because, Right now, on the phablet side of things, it's only Samsung, and I would say LG V30 now this year is probably going to push more in that range to say there is a, a good argument. I agree, yes, this, the argument of people like, you know, big hands over here, the big hand crew, you know. Um, <laughs> what, are you, what are you trying to say about that? What, you <laughs> like to call that? This sounds like a political debate all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> But but I mean you know, I, I I mean to you guys' this point Warren and Juan it is true yes your Q and A has to be spot on yeah. um, you you have to make sure if you're going to do it then you got to do it right either way like whatever we argue that they should or shouldn't do it the, the main argument here is you guys are correct is that if you're going to make it therefore you need need to source the right suppliers have the right kind of Q and A and then not give us a bullshit answer that says yeah. it's Although, not faulty, but it's faulty, we'll fix it, we'll give you an extra year warranty, but it's not faulty. So the thing, the, thing, the thing that I want to throw in there is I've just gone through the Note, the OnePlus 5, the Pixel 2, and the LG V30. When you tip, I mean, like what you were saying, like how you, you could start to see color shift just from tipping like that, all of these phones are exhibiting some kind of color shift. Yeah. I think the thing that's saving Samsung is because I, I like to use Samsung phones under basic. I don't like adaptive color. And what I'm mad at is the S7 had one of the most color accurate phone screens I'd ever seen when you used the basic mode. And in basic mode on the S8 Plus and the Note 8, the screens are really ruddy. But when you tip it, it's not a blue shift. It's a yellow shift. So you start getting yellow green, which is a little bit closer to red. So I think it's a little less noticeable. Um, the color hue on LG's P OLED is cooler, and that means you're going to see it continue to get colder, which is why we see a more marked blue shift. So again, I don't think that unless unless you're seeing something where the phone is almost dead on, and you're seeing you know a, a strange color shift under that kind of a viewing condition. That's that's where I want to be careful with what are the normal operating parameters of a phone display and taking a phone off axis means things are going to change with the color and the lighting. What I'm more concerned about is some of the examples I've seen of the uneven lighting on uh, yeah. on, on LG phones and I think that's more what's contributing to things like burn in. So if you've yeah. got a phone with crazy uneven backlighting and it's not even really backlighting it's un uneven pixel lighting. I think that's going to be a situation where you're far more apt to see evidence of screen degradation over a much shorter period of time. And, and, and that's where this is kind of an unacceptable gambling issue for a phone that's this expensive. <laughs> you know, like, you know, let's say it's a coin flip. You know, are you really okay spending $800 on a 50-50 chance that you get it? Uh, 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 I see, so like, Warren's already, I, I kind of see, like, oh, uh, uh, no. Know. $50. Uh, Sam, are you still there? Take. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, your image just you. Your yeah, it's Chrome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's Chrome. I don't know if it's. I don't <laughs> it's know. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sam has like a power up code right there. It's like, ah, give me your energy. All right, let me try this. So again. so again, I think a part of this is once the internet echo chamber holds on to some notion that there's a problem, we're going to see it run rampant. You know, yeah. like, oh, oh my gosh, this blue tint. All screens color shift. Now, does the LG color shift more than a Samsung? I believe it does. But I would also say that is this within some sort of threshold that I think would be acceptable performance and how often you're using your phone at a more extreme angle than looking right at it? I, I don't necessarily believe that that's a scary situation. And I'm willing to cut LG a little slack knowing that they are behind Samsung in terms of OLED production. Uh, what I will say in terms of LG with this is, I am actually, I won't cut them slack. I'm disappointed. The reason why, and I'm not comparing the Pixel, I'm going to bring up the V30. I had a pre-production unit. Mm -hmm. 
And, and I kid you not, when I got the retail unit, the pre-production unit, I was actually on, a, uh, I think I was Google, I was on Google's homepage, which is mostly white. And I turned on the retail unit and it was just pure yellowness, straight up. And I'm just like, straight trash on me. And I'm like, this is your <laughs> own phone. Why am I looking at the pre-production and I want to keep and use that and I don't right. care for this? So to me, it's it, it almost like, forget even uh, Google for a second. LG, come on, man. Like, you need to step up. I mean, you need to do your homework here. This is a, this is a cutthroat world, okay? <laughs> This is this cold. Yeah, right? this is this is this is the mature smartphone market. If you miss, we've seen HTC miss. Yeah, well, so don't mean I want to see yellow. I, I don't think it's that dire for for LG. No, no, I'm not saying it's. I'm not saying it's dire. I'm just saying that. You know, but for me, mentally, it is dire when your own pre-production, yeah, just well, looks better. Th this this is this is I think what what sort of plays into this discussion that we've been having with LG. I think since the G4. Uh, especially for me, my problem phone was the G5. I went through three of those things. Um, <laughs> is we, we we are continuing to have a conversation we shouldn't be with a company that is trying to be a top tier manufacturer. Yeah. We should not be having these kinds of con uh, uh, conversations about consistency. But one of the things that I think I'm more upset with Google than I am with LG is that the Pixel 2 XL is not the Pixel 2 XL made by LG. <laughs> On that case, it's the Pixel 2 XL made by Google. This is their new hashtag. This is their new brand. This is their new advertising campaign. The phone made by Google. And if you're not in there assuring the QA, I, I mean, you can have every contract with LG saying, yeah, sure, well, totally, you'll make good screens. We totally believe you. The buck stops with Google. And so yeah. this is why I feel like if this is going to be the crown jewel premier, you know, showcase phone for what Android should be, the then Google, Google needs to take the hit. Google needs to be the one responsible and their, their <laughs> actions in rectifying the situation are inadequate. It's literally the G phone. Like it is the G phone. It has a damn G. Right. Phone. <laughs> it be the G Yo, they should, Godfather of they should call it, it the G phone next. Like, yeah. let's call this yeah? one. Yeah. I agree. I mean, it's like, well, we were talking about that. I mean, if it's going to be the Google iPhone, that's how it's going to be described to people. You might as well just take that next step. It doesn't sound as great as the iPhone, the but G yeah, phone. G, G phone. I got that G phone, son. There you go. <laughs> There you go. That's all you need to hear. All you got to hear is Flossie say that one time. All right, speaking of G moves, Samsung decided to drop some troll video this week and basically just told LG and Google, smack, right there, check out our screens. It's shiny, it's glossy. And look at all these YouTubers just talking about it. So just quick thoughts. What do you guys think of the They other? did not have me in their video because I don't like their current generation of screens. <laughs> <laughs> did did Samsung, Samsung can go <laughs> climb a tree for all I care. I want my <laughs> S7 screen back. <laughs> I was going to hate on this immediately. I'm not even going to like give this a chance. I'm just going to go right up swinging for a thousand. I don't like this one. <laughs> I have so many videos where people are trying to call me some kind of fanboy because I was putting like I put the you know against LCDs and then I against Samsung's own previous displays. You're like, oh, something's wrong with your white balance, or like, what's or why'd you set the color tone different on on the note? And you're like, yeah, why no. did you set it different, man? Come on, you know, well, you know. Yeah. this is all no. you know. the, 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 the note is inconsistent. Though. No, we saw that the the note is inconsistent. Yeah, so, not, so, so here's here's the inconsistency. Yes, so I was we we're talking about cameras, right? I was like, look, I'm tired of like taking pictures of my note and I have to drop the exposure on you know just to get a good picture. Sam's like, no, nah. he pulls it up, and I'm like, how come your screen? color is so balanced and i pulled mine out and it's just like super like it goes to a thousand two hundred nits immediately i swear to god it also depends on what modes you have it on no you know, we modes look, can change how that screen no we, we we went to the settings and changed all of that you know, yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, but his was still significantly brighter sam was like no. you, sam's like you, you put it's on a different mode i'm like take the phone set it it's like 
Never mind, your stuff is still brighter. It's okay. <laughs> Any company shouldn't be throwing shade right now either when it comes to the consistency of AMOLED or OLED production. I'm I'm not super thrilled with Samsung at the moment either. I, I mean, I, I, I do like I like the screen at them, one. Like you just just take the display to throw at them. <laughs> I like I like a little controversy. I love the ad. I love the fact that they went out and said, Google, you want to play in the big boy space and phones? Let's do this. I love I love watching Funny. companies go head to head, but yeah, it's, again, it's a little friendly kind of ribbing, I think. Yeah. So, well, so again, company that basically, it basically invented invented every feature in Android that's available right now. <laughs> that's true. But, but again, I, I feel like if we're talking about a manufacturer that may or may not have had some serious problems with building a phone, um. Well, yeah, I, I wasn't gonna say. <laughs> but funny how that seemed I mean, that word cool seemed to come here. immediately like, to mind. Where's the clapback, dude? We gotta get that clapback, man. See, I'm thinking though, it's I think maybe Samsung offered yeah, they probably did. displays, and Google said no. They probably went, "Yo, we're trying to screw over Apple. Why don't you take these displays here so we can tell them we don't got them?" Well, that, that's also I think what's kind of interesting about Samsung being as large a company as it is. I, I wonder if Google maybe did go to Samsung and with the current yield that they need to produce for the iPhone, couldn't get preferred pricing on the Pixel. Samsung isn't gonna, Samsung displays is not Samsung. Yeah, yeah. Samsung displays are going to shop whoever's gonna give them the, you know, the most money for their, for their product. And if Apple can tie up Samsung display manufacturing on the iPhone 10, I, I wonder if part of LG's POLED return wasn't a short-term strategy enacted because they were also working with Google on this phone. We have to believe that this phone was probably about 18 months in production, right? If yeah. not two years, if not since, you know, before the original Pixel. Uh, it, it would make sense to me that the business strategy could, I mean, like what you're saying, you know, maybe maybe it was Google who decided not to go with Samsung on the bigger screen. It could also have very well have been maybe Google just couldn't buy through Samsung gotcha. at a rate that made sense for their phone. I mean, it, it seems to me like, I don't know, it seems like they try to, because they're making two phones and it seems like they're always trying to avoid some type of nepotism and continue to try to work with different manufacturers to show that they're not um, trying to compete against Android manufacturers, but so much. So they try to use different people and this could have been a case when them trying to say, oh yeah, you know, we're not just gonna stick with HTC. We'll use another company as well too, and we want to show that you know we're, we're supporting every manufacturer, but we're also gonna make our own, you know, offering. Now, now, Warren, do you think that that was like by design, or do you think that's something that they can fall back on? No, oh, look, oh, hey, wow. look, we're totally but still working with partners, uh, but our HTC division couldn't I scale think, up fast enough for us to do what we wanted. I think honestly, LG sold them on POLEDs to be just as good as AMOLEDs. Um, with a um, with the saying, we can give you this the same pr production at a lesser price, and you'll be able to save money here on the phone and make more of a margin on the two XL. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what actually was said, and they probably looked at it and said, "All right, we got to spend a lot of money on AMOLEDs here, which cut into the profits. And if we try to go up to you know the six inches, is this is going to cost us significantly more too for another inch off of this phone? We want to keep this phone at a certain price range too." We don't want to reach 1200 bucks on a, on, on a Pixel 2 XL, but let's, let's see if we can reach a little bit less. So I think that's kind of probably the reason why POLED was chosen, because LG probably went in there with their best POLED to produce, paid it against probably whatever the worst Samsung AMOLED they could find, because they're, they're, they're not prone to not, they're not prone to not doing this one. If you go to plenty of their TV events, you'll see it. And they probably went compared to two and say, see how much better we are and look what else we could do. We could save battery life and it's cheaper. And then when full production came out, we saw that. Yeah, well, thank you for that segue, and I'm going to skip a topic. Speaking of OLED prices, if you're going to fix your iPhone X screen, it's going to cost you about 279 bucks. That's cheap considering what the phone price is. Yeah, but still don't break it. <laughs> That's definitely relative to the phone price. Do yeah. not. I mean, it's, it's, it's about as expensive as the most expensive blue Vivo phone. But hey, I mean, it, it's technically at the proper percentage that it's at. Uh, that's how iPhone users will defend it because it's the 
premium product. So if you're going to have a premium <laughs> product, you need to have, there's going to be premium prices with it. It's not like you go out there and you get yourself like an Audi or a high-end car and expect not to have to pay for premium. Well, but I mean, like yeah, having recent Samsung's been pretty, pretty expensive to replace too. I mean, not, not 50, but haven't recent Samsung screens been pretty expensive to replace too? Like, aren't we getting close oh, to yeah. a $200 price on, on the S8? No, the S8 is under 200. Oh, no, the, the, uh, the Note 5 is still over 200. Why is the Note 5 over 200? I don't know why. I try to replace one of the Note 5, the screens and the Note 5 I had, and it cost me close to it. No, you went to the wrong place. I, I, yeah. I, I called three different places and they quoted me the same exact price. Well, and then also, I mean, are we talking that there's been a standardization on the Note screen that you can shop it somewhere else, or do you have to go through like a Samsung authorized? You can shop it somewhere else. Okay. So I basically, I went to uh, three different, uh, I would call them aftermarket repair shops in New York, and they quoted me the exact same price. You know, it's, it's, it's getting pretty expensive to, to, to fix the, uh, the Note 5 screen as well. Hmm. Okay. Mm, okay. But yeah, um, that's how the argument's going to work. So it, 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 they're going to be like, well, it just, it's, it's an OLED display. It is technology that, that's new that Apple has developed. And <laughs> well, first of all, I, display. I wonder if, if how, how repairable the screen actually is. You know, like if you damage the screen, I think it's highly unlikely that you can damage the screen without marring some other part of the phone. Yeah. Like even if you yeah. just dent or scratch like the aluminum rim or the back yeah. or something like that, then you're pretty much looking at kind Neville. of a full replacement anyway. Yeah, and so sure. with the way that the uh, the unibrow is is layered into the top of the phone screen around the display, I also wonder like, how do you, I, I'm a, I can't wait for teardowns on this phone. I don't think it's going to be something that people can easily fix or repair or clean up or something like that. I, I just don't, I, I see most people are going to be going in there paying their 250 because they broke the screen and then probably walking away with a reaper. New phone. Yeah. I can't, yeah, I, I, did, I agree with you. I'm waiting for a Jerry Riggs video. See how long it's going to take you to actually tear. Oh, and I really want to see um, who are the, te the, the other teardown the uh is it i fix it um it's going to be interesting because i don't know our company's even going to get this display from third parties to be able to even make because this isn't like a standard sheet display it's just it's got that little stupid no i i, I bet this will be like where apple's been going on other repair parts where if it's not digitally signed in some very specific apple proprietary way then it oh you can't lock your phone because it's uh compromised the security is gone just like they went through with it. Um, uh, well, since we're still talking about Apple, we move to the next topic. And Sam, can you join in here? So insiders have suggested that um, Apple is struggling still with its uh, face ID and that they are reducing the quality of detection so they can get more um, devices out there. Because remember, remember we had the remote yields? Um, mm -hmm. A month ago, right? In other words, so, they're, they're the words they, they they were writing checks that their asses can't cash on this face ID. So, <laughs> no, 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 I'm not gonna. I'm, well, I think that's taken it to the extreme. I don't, I don't think they can't do what they claim they could. I just think the process is to get to that level of sensitivity is difficult when you have non skilled workers just assembling stuff. And this is what they didn't think about. They're like, oh, in the lab, it works great because we have five engineers all holding a single piece of glass, putting lenses and things. And they're like, oh, get to the production line. Like, oh, oh, this thing that might be just a little bit too sensitive if you start, like, when you start actually assembling it. And I think the biggest issue here, I think, I don't know if the article covers this, the biggest issue is they were having a hard time getting parts for this anyway. So Foxconn had to shut down part of the production um, line for, um, for Apple because they just couldn't assign workers to do nothing. So here's, <laughs> here, um, here's the breakdown of, of, of the parts here. And one second, let me share it for you. And you, you are right, though, because it's a, it's a litany of uh, part composition. So you've got the image sensor includes an MS and ST microelectronic sensor manufacturers. 
Uh, you've got uh, the assembly by LG Innotech and Sharp for the Flood uh, Illuminator, uh, as well as also the dot projector, both from LG Innotech and Sharp. Uh, you've got manufacturers include Heptagon, ASM, AG, and HiMax. So literally, that's five, six companies sending different things just for the unibrow itself. Uh, so sourcing correctly will be an issue. And then the yeah. article also talked about how the lead up time for this, which is usually two years, is yeah. much shorter. So Apple didn't come to their suppliers at, in time to say, hey, look, this is what we're doing. They kind of came in a little bit last minute and said, okay, we're doing this and here are the parts you need to get. So let's just make it happen type of thing. So I think, I mean, you're definitely right. It's not something they can't do because this is a tech that we've seen on Windows Hello. Sorry. Uh, uh -huh. uh, autoplay, you uh, got burned. I know, right? This is, some, this is something that um, Microsoft has done with Windows Hello cameras and we know it's possible. So it's not like it's, it can't be done. I think it's just the timing and also the sourcing of parts. But uh, anyone else want to interject here? Anything else you want to add, people? No, I mean, again, I think this is going to increasingly be part of the discussion for phones moving forward is we've got, we've, we've got to see these companies, if they're going to continue to raise the prices on us because of these kinds of logistics, then we also need the guarantee that we're going to be getting consistent products out of them. I, I mean, we're even going to have yet another debate on uh, radios and antennas on the iPhone because of you know, Qualcomm chipsets versus Intel chipsets. And are you really getting all of your LTE performance? Maybe you should just always buy the Verizon model because that's got the CDMA support that you need from Qualcomm, which you'll have better throughput speeds on other LTE carriers. I mean, like, <laughs> we, we have to start, we have to at some point for Apple, for Samsung, for top tier manufacturers, we have to at some point say, it's not okay that they're kind of the same if you have two different variants of the same phone. It's, it's kind of not okay at $1,000 that yields are this low, that there could be consumer disruption when one little part from one company in this thing that took a dozen manufacturers to produce is not working. I mean, at some point, we do have to start calling these companies out more considering, you know, how, how much less buying and spending power consumers have these days. Oh, definitely true. And, and, and realistically, I think it still goes back to the whole discussion. I know you're going to be like, no, it's a, they have a two phone, um, a two phone release uh, kind of uh, mentality or marketing strategy. But the idea is, at the end of the day, do you really need a bigger phone? Think about it. If they didn't have the 8 Plus out there, might they have had more time to focus on the X? If they didn't have to work on a scaled up version of the eight. It's it's just well, the scaled up version of the better camera. They could have they, could, they can't put yeah. this camera on the eight, they just don't want to. Yeah. That's just called they, they might have had <laughs> I mean they could try to melt the old device and then you get no. the people complaining. I, I know, but I, I do no, I'm not, I do agree. You don't have to make a middle of the road the, the, the device. You can still make a high end device, but not too high end device, one that's basically six inch plus on another that's like five point five. You don't have to do that. I, I don't. Know, do you have to do this? I think this year, you know, some of the narrative also, and like Steve Wozniak said, he said he's skipping the X because the X is the eight, and the eight is the seven, and the seven is the six. Exactly what he said. Now, to me, it would have marketing wise, hype wise, and also even maybe manufacturing wise, if you released the eight and said this is the iPhone eight. And then people are like, wait, where's the 8 Plus? You're like, and here's the X coming out next. The X will oh, take yeah, that, that, not DMX, man, come on. The X, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why he's not in the commercial for them for this. Because the, all the crack he's been doing. Oh, I mean, come on. <laughs> L L L LG missed a huge opportunity with the G6, too. You know how amazing sure. that would be if, like, if, if he was in the, in the commercial? Think about that. Just imagine them playing that song, X gonna give it to you. <laughs> Just the way he talks to him. He's the only one that sounds like him. No one else sounds like DMX. D -M -X. Just imagine him. Yeah. Just imagine the commercials. Go, better yet, a pure example is go, go go watch a video of him like rapping like, uh, what was it? What was he rapping? Um, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? 
Oh, Imagine oh, that. Okay. Oh, oh, commercial. Uh, <laughs> okay. As now you've been side railed. Um, but just going back to the fact that if you just announce the eight, put the camera in the eight, maybe just increase the battery by an eight, 200 milliamps, you can still do it. And then give us an X as your replacement for the plus because the X has a bigger display than the plus, by the way. Mm -hmm. It does. Well, does it? Yeah, 5.7. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. You're just looking at the diagonal. Hold on. The, the X is a 5.7 two by one with that bar cut out. Hold on. Let me yeah, but the 5.5 five, five inch with, I mean. Well, no, 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 no. Because what we need to do is talk about surface area. Hold on. You guys keep talking. I'm going to do the math I on this. surface area, the X might actually have a larger surface area. No, no. I, it, it might be smaller. It might be small. So no, no, I think I think the the X is going to be what is it? It's a five point seven two by one display. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, as you're doing the math, um, but anyway, that would be your larger phone with still a smaller footprint that both people can use, whether people with large hands or you know regular folks, and that will make more sense. And then it's like, okay, I don't want to pay a thousand for the X, but I do like the eight, and I think it goes a long way as we see. The math people doing math over there. Um, you, to me, it makes, it makes more sense. And it's something that could have helped with some of the issues, supposedly. Like Apple now came out and said, said that that is not true. Uh, everything is going ahead on schedule. So we just have to see. Uh, pre orders happen on uh, Friday morning. <laughs> okay. Okay. So a 5.7 inch diagonal on an 18 by 9 screen has 83.8 centimeters squared surface area mm -hmm. right 83.8 the 5.5 inch screen in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio has 83.4 centimeters squared. oh god in heaven it's but, just so much bigger <laughs> but no 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 but the unibrow Cuts in oh, your user. Oh, God damn it, your bro has, gets us again. So, so basically, we essentially end up at at the iPhone 8 Plus having like decimal points, slightly more usable surface area on the display. Yeah, man, you are right. Usable surface area is the way. Okay, all right, all right. but still, it is comparable. <laughs> it is comparable in terms of surface area and. It would just make more sense if that was your new replacement as well as also the better device and you didn't have to have an a plus anymore to me that would have just made more sense no i, I agree with you and and, and again I, I think that there are opportunities but i i wonder if apple just wasn't afraid too afraid to rock the boat on their cash cow ios is where the company makes the majority of their cash they're kind of i think this so I think it's bad for them that they've got so many iPhones right now, because I think consumers are looking at these very, you know, gradation differences from the iPhone. What do we? Do they still carry the 6s? Yeah, uh, yeah. iPhone SE, the iPhone 7, the iPhone 8, the iPhone 10. I think they still carry the 6s. Yeah. Um, with having so many devices in in the stable as being current supported phones, I I think this is a like a a number crunchers decision not a visionaries decision yeah they do have the sc 6s 7 Fox, eight, see, that's too many i for too many when it, this is exactly what wozniak i think nailed when he was talking about why he went with the iphone 8 how do you how do you communicate with consumers where they used to just have the iphone and then you could get last year's iphone for cheaper and then they had the little iPhone and the big iPhone. And then they had the really little iPhone, the little iPhone and the big iPhone. And last year's little iPhone and big iPhone. And I mean, like, this totally sounds like a bean counter decision. Not, we are yeah. driving the mobile industry and we are the benchmark by which all come. Uh, this, is a, this is a decision made by people who are afraid to lose out on a few dollars on the table. And in essence, will probably cost the company money, more money in the long run. I think what it is, is um, um, well, who's who's the CEO again? I forgot his name. Sorry, Tim uh, Cook. Tim Cook. Tim Cook. You bad. forgot the CEO. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, Tim. Oh, no, I mean, like, I like Tim Cook, but Tim Cook is an operations guy who gets you amazing yeah, manufacturing. I, I can tell you what's China. happening. I tell you what happened, right? So I have the headphone wall. Tim Cook has the iPhone wall, and he was like, "I gotta have at least starting from an SC, just to cover up two each." That was his thing, <laughs> and. That's why we have next year we're gonna have the iPhone X and the X Plus. 
Wait for it. Oh, I hope not. It's going to give it to you. <laughs> Two. Well, uh, so what have you guys been reading up like the rumors that the iPhone X might be getting some kind of price adjustment? I thought that was the eight, oh. that the price adjustment. No, eight, eight. Oh, was eight, it the eight, eight that's getting eight, the price adjustment? Yeah. I thought the iPhone 10 was going to be getting some kind of it's adjustment. The eight because eight has not been been selling well. Yeah. Because a lot of people are just like, I'll wait for the X. Or I, I, I know a few people who actually saw the eight come out, weren't going to get the X because it was going to be too expensive and ended up on the iPhone 7. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I, mean, I, I like that. That totally iPhone. defeats the like purpose, the, man. No, I really like that they brought in wireless charging. I think 4K at 60 frames per second on the camera is cool. They didn't need any of that. And they really didn't want any of that. And so you look at the iPhone 7 to the iPhone 8, and once you have iOS 11 on both phones, what what's the benefit if you're not going to use That totally features? reminds me of what uh, Mr. Fisher said, where he was like, yeah, man, one of my friends is like, yeah, I have the new iPhone 7 last year. <laughs> He's like, this is the... Yeah, six, well, and I still have a few family members where I, I, I've been saying, you know, you have an iPhone five, you've got cases and mounts for it. I mean, a five, five, uh, my uncle has the five S you've got cases and mounts for it. Just get the SE literally. I mean, you don't have to rebuy any accessories. It's going to fit right in. It's more powerful. It's got a better camera. Just, just do that. It's, it's going to be half the price of a phone that you won't have to buy extra accessories for, and you can still use the, the aux line in your truck. <laughs> that is true. That is very, very true there. Um, let's move to our last topic. Um, OnePlus 5T. OnePlus does this every year. They always have a 5T version. I care no, because, I'm, I'm because the little, 5T I'm, is always the better version. The T version yeah, okay. is always the better version. <laughs> it is, but it's just like, then why the hell would you put out the first one? You always wait for the letter augmentation. If it's but an a, iPhone, you wait for an S. If it's a OnePlus, now we wait for the T. That's my problem with this thing. It's like <laughs> they put out a better version of the same damn phone six months later. And I'm like, at least, at least the other companies just throw two phones in your damn face and tell you to pick one. This one is like, not only are we going to get you on this year's new phone, but we're going to bone you six months later when we give you a better one, probably at a lower price. Well, yeah, but then six months after that, you'll get an even better phone. Exactly. So there you go. So no. It's, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. And then six months after that, you can get an even better phone. This, this, this is... <laughs> one one plus. can't even make words. He's so intense. Or it's like... No, like, no, I don't have words for this. <laughs> so, you have a word. No. All right, so, so let's, let's uh, just love do it. a little quick breakdown of what this device is. But for me, what's the most interesting thing is showing Amazon's aggressive yeah. smartphone nature. So right now, besides you getting budget phones, also you can get the LG G6 and the G6 Plus on Amazon as well as part of the Amazon phone. So Amazon is going through this whole process of saying, Let's put out a lot of devices. And this is going to be an Amazon exclusive from this leaked image here saying OnePlus 5T, launch events on the 16th, sales starts. Oh, this is what you should have done from the get go instead of telling people to send you pictures. Saying OnePlus should have done this from the get go instead of asking, send us your pictures. And if you're oh, cute God. enough, you get a pre order. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you bring it out from last year. But um, in terms of what the device will have, it's still going to have an 835. It's going to have an 18 by 9 full view display. Um, it's not an AMOLED display, I think. I, I, I don't know. I'm just guessing. Um, chipsets will either have 6 or 8 gigs of RAM, which is what they usually do. Uh, camera is expected to be 2020 megapixel setups. Um, and Android Oreo. Uh, this looks like the definite version of the OnePlus 5 for this. No, this is a OnePlus 6. Like what? No, this is a damn near brand new phone. Like, no, I, I really don't think it is. Have, have you guys yeah. seen? So this is what I mentioned while you guys were messing around with mics. Um, oh, thank you. Why, why, why I'm thinking that this is, I mean, like all of this stuff has been looking really legit is we, we've seen the Oppo, the R11s. And yeah. it really does look like they took the exact rear shell of the Oppo R11 and then just put in a taller screen, screen. on the front. Yeah. And so I kind of get like the 5T, it's not about changing up the chipset. Like last year, the 3T was about getting the 821 over the 820. Yeah. And did the OnePlus 3, the OnePlus 3 had six gigabytes of RAM. So it wasn't difference with the RAM. Yeah, the um, RAM, 
yeah, it's the, the RAM was the same. But so now instead of it being like there's a new there's there's no Qualcomm 836, right? No. So instead of it being about getting a better chipset, it's we're gonna change up the screen. But other than that, it's virtually the same phone. Oh yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. I think I don't think it's 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 a new device because it, the internals are the same. The camera setup, I think, is the same. At least now, off the gate, it's not going to be terrible yeah. uh, because you know they've done through all the software updates they needed to. But it's just the definite version of the device, and I think it goes back to displays again. They probably couldn't source uh, eighteen by nine display earlier. Well, and, and also, how were who was making a full HD two by one screen? No one. I I. I don't. I, I don't know who. I'm. I'm assuming they're probably sourcing this from Samsung. I don't know where it is. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's um, but yeah, I. I don't think that was really that Pixel Pitch was really in the pipeline. Yeah. When they were trying to manufacture the the One Plus Five. Okay. I'm just curious. Would this would, 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 would this have um, Alexa integrated? Would it have? It would make sense though, right? If it's an Amazon. So a lot of the Amazon devices, are, they have not pushed Alexa on them as the integration. They've just said uh, it's the Amazon ads, right? So yeah, the, ad, the ads are what they're really Ads, which of. just drop, drop your price down by 100 bucks or something like that, whatever the, it, it entails. So um, uh, yeah, Danny Winget said it's Samsung. <laughs> Probably the same panel on the Mate 10 Pro. Mm. Thank you, Danny. What's up, hey. man? Thanks, Danny. Um, I'm no, trying to remember what the screen size. I, I don't think it could be, because isn't the screen size on the Mate 10 Pro a, a six-inch diagonal? Is this also a, a six-inch diagonal? I don't think the R11s is. Is it? Um, I, I think it is. My voice is getting really squeaky. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me pull up the Oppo, uh, the Oppo, and just see if they have a screen size. In there. Yeah. But yeah, no, um, you know, I, I think, like I said, it's it's the definite version of the OnePlus. I do like the partnership with Amazon. Yeah. Um, it just kind of ensures that you're going to it, for for Amazon. This is their this is their premium device because I think they were trying to do that with the Essential phone, and that didn't work out well. Yeah. How Essential rolled out. Mm -hmm. um, and you, and they haven't actually put essential phone as part of the phones you can buy through Amazon. You know, the Amazon, um, what do you call it again? Um, Amazon exclusive. exclusive type phone. Yeah. So right now we have, you know, on the lower end side, we have some Alcatel stuff. We have all the Motorola's. And then we now have the LG, LG devices like the G6 and the G6 yeah. Plus, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, it's, it's funny because I've definitely out. been... I've definitely been concerned about Amazon's presence in sort of the global market and what they represent in the United States. But if any company can actually make a dent in consumer mindshare that you don't have to buy your phone through the carrier. Yeah. 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 Be that. Amazon, yeah. yeah. And very, I won't be surprised, you know, if as this, this program goes, you're adding something like the one plus five T um, Amazon is going to extend its financing come next year to it. So now you can now do the monthly payments and not just buy it outright. You can spend that five hundred dollars, and you know, in ten months you either pay fifty or eighteen months it drops out to like twenty two, twenty seven dollars each. Um, you know, it's it's going to be a very interesting and good way, at least for consumers, to get the devices they want without going through carriers. And and for Amazon also, this is this helps them in so many different markets at the end where, you know, people can now get these devices and not wait for, you know, is, is LG going to release it there? You know how LG, like, like LG last year, having different types of devices left and right all over the place, you know, uh, yeah. Amazon doesn't like that. They like one thing. <laughs> so I think that would help in, in certain cases. So, I mean, it's, uh, should be good. Yeah. I, I, I like this as, as a way to shake up the market and, it was kind of what we were talking about when um, uh, when the Alcatel came out. That now there's there's more of a strategy employed here instead of like trying to do their own phone. <laughs> I should pull out my Fire Phone and see if anything Fire still phone. works on it. <laughs> um, it but instead of instead of trying to do your own, and you know they learned this lesson way too late, but they still learned this lesson. Make it accessible for other manufacturers that consumers might not be aware of. 
LG has some mind share, but they are not front and center when you walk into a carrier store. I, I went looking for the uh, Verizon makes a really nice glass screen protector for the V30. I'm giving Verizon a shout out here because they have this whole cradle system to help you align it and uh, install it perfectly as opposed Why to just store? sort of... Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it comes in the box. Oh, okay. so you actually clip this thing to your phone, and then it, in, you know, you in, it helps you apply the screen protector. I'm really excited by that idea because it's also a Verizon branded product. Um, they, n no one, no one has it here. I can't go buy it. I, for the last two weeks, it's existed, and I could buy it online and then have to pay ridiculous shipping charges on it. But I go into carrier Verizon stores, and not only do they not have it. I have to go wandering to like the back corner of a dusty unlit area of a Verizon store to just see the V30. So, you know, any manufacturer that is trying to find some way of reaching consumers and they're not considering deals with, I mean, also I think we should give shout outs to companies that have been there for a while, like B&H. Like B&H has been on top of phones, uh, unlocked phones for a while. And yeah. then, you know, Amazon has more mind share. But I, I got to give them a huge shout out because anytime I'm shopping comparative pricing, I'm usually at B&H first. Um, so, you know, sorry, long rambling. I'm excited just because now maybe this is going to make it much easier uh, long term and over the next two years that if a Huawei, you know, if a consumer is, is interested in a phone with a very specific kind of camera setup, they can actually do better comparative shopping than just rolling up to an AT&T store and hoping that they have some other option than a Samsung or an iPhone. Yeah. Well, thought they would have been in this deal before oh. um, Huawei. You would think they'd be in this before. Well, what, uh, didn't, weren't, weren't they one of the, the first with the Honor? I thought the Honor was also one of these. Oh, yeah, Amazon the Honor was mostly well. online, but it was yeah, on, no, the Honor, Honor was sold online. It wasn't part of Amazon's yeah. device. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of when Honor cut their deal with Target, not not Amazon. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, they, yeah. Had, they, had, they have actual floor space at Target. That's, that's different. You're right. Um, I can see here. Did you figure out the size? Uh, Danny and Roland are talking about the size of the... Um, so R11. the R11 Plus, I mean, yeah, we're going through this and Ronald was pulling up some specs too. Thanks for looking some stuff up for me, Ronald. I appreciate it. I, I think part of the confusion is, again, we're saying stuff is just on the diagonal. So the R11 Plus is a six inch display, but it's a 16 by nine, six inch display. The R11S, from what I can look up, is a 5.8 inch display. Um, oh, wait, no. Now I'm seeing something different. Now I'm seeing on GSM <laughs> Arena, it is a six inch diagonal. Why would okay, you so then maybe Arena. that is the same panel that they're using in, well, in the main. What website did you use, Juan? GSM Arena, man. Come on. I, well, I, I did Ricky. a search for, you're, you're Ricky. for Ricky. like an idiot. No, you're right. I, I'm sorry, Ricky. I should have seen the website first. Although I'm still talking to GSM Arena as to why their audio benchmarks are so wonky, because I think all of their audio benchmarks are wrong. I, so. I mean, and now you're just throwing shade, man. Yeah, Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was on a warpath, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about fight, 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 fight. All right. So, I mean. Yeah, an audio file fight. They throw tunes at each other. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, guys. And, uh, Here's my pink noise question? generator. <laughs> that just sounds dirty, man. Come on. Literally, literally clean, one person man. watching this went, huh? Huh. <laughs> like, didn't think it was funny, but at least understood the reference. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do we have any questions, guys, in, in the in the live chat? Because we've, we've kind of come to uh, the end of the segment. Is there anything we missed this week that was important? Essential phone got another discount. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's yeah, essential cool. phone drops. I give up on it. Well, it's not another discount. That's the first discount, though. Yeah. Really? No, I think the first discount finally just started. Yeah. So, so, but, it, 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 wasn't it announced at six ninety nine? Was it a $7.99? I think it was $6.99. And now you can get it for $4.99 because it's... Oh, no, 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 no. I think, I think the, the $4.99 price cut is the big price cut that they were... Yeah. No, I thought it's just before it came out at $7.99. Yeah, I thought so too. Uh, wow, even worse. So now you can get it at $4.99. Yay! <laughs> Wait, let me, let me check. I don't want to type on it. <laughs> oh, man. You can tell they're having problems moving that phone, man. That's crazy. I mean, the, the camera issues and the issues they had off the, the bat really, yeah. really hit the phone. Um, and well, this is, this, is, this is part of what it, why I think phones have been a little frustrating to discuss lately. Is, well, we're probably not going to see another. Is, uh, well, no, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. Well, 
Yeah, I, I, but, but, but I think this is part of it, is Essential went out there to talk about new features and new build materials. And I don't think they did a very good job of reaching out to consumers, explaining why this was such a premium price product when the initial Android fans who pay attention to the Android ecosystem are going to look at spec sheets and they're going to look at IP ratings and they're going to look at things and say, oh, but my Samsung has IP68. Why don't you have IP68? Um, they're not going to care that the back, which also feels like glass, is really a very expensive ceramic, right? They're not going to care about that. I think they could have made a better argument to consumers about what a premium or a luxury device should resemble. But like so many other manufacturers, I don't think they had their messaging in place. I don't think they had boots on the ground. I don't think they, they made the right emotional appeal Mm -hmm. to general consumers and instead they tried to play the one plus game at the top end of the pricing market yeah that's 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 a hard fight and they lost that fight and now hopefully i hope they can regroup because there are so many good ideas in the essential phone that i don't want to be that guy who says oh don't buy one wait for gen 3 because we won't get one unless there's some yeah. kind of traction on gen 2 well well i i don't have to think i doubt there's going to be a gen 2 I don't think it's going to be a Gen 2, to be honest with you. Yeah. I think there's too much money from outside investors poured into this company right now that it just folds. I think we probably will get a Gen 2. Gen yeah. 2 will be the deciding as to whether or not they have any staying power in the market. Yeah, but that's good. I don't know. I mean, you're, you're talking Gen 2. You're, you got to be talking about a phone that's probably not going to get picked up by any carrier. They, um, no, I mean, this point, so. they, they need to sit down and revisit their partnership with Amazon and try and get that thing at least part of the Amazon devices this year. So at least the holiday, you now have the Essential and the OnePlus 5T as those two devices on the higher yep. higher tier. And then, then you're going to get some traction there. And then next year, the benefit they have is that because of the kind of display they have and the materials, since everybody's switching to that, pricing for that will drop. So they can, and they should be a little bit more realistic with your design and- the, You know, I, I, I get what you're saying. And, and I think from just sort of a broad strategy point where we've seen a number of companies succeed in that space like ZTE and OnePlus, I yeah. think if Essential backpedals and tries to make a premium mid-ranger, I think they fail. I think that space is just as crowded. I, I think if they can get their messaging to more of an emotional point and less of a let's court the Android geeks, then they stand a much better job of surviving because they're boutique -y. They're little, they're tiny, they're, they're a legit small organization, not like OnePlus, which is sort of under the Oppo umbrella. This is something where I feel you could make the argument that a Virtu used to make, but make it more reasonably and make it more, uh, uh, make it more realistically. I mean, that's true. I mean, like, like Danny is saying- I think it's too late too, It's, it's too late I agree. as well. And I um, think I, ultimately I, I agree with Danny, but I think if they have any chance of succeeding, it's you can make a luxury premium. This is made out of materials that no other phone is made out of. I mean, again, that is a Virtu argument, but I think they have the cred to deliver a nice phone, not just some BS phone that's covered in Swarovski crystals. <laughs> no, but true, but see, but at that point is if you're going to do that, then you have to add all those lifestyle features. Well, in there. I, I, do you? I, I, I don't think you have, do. I think if they, I think, uh, if they I think the iPhone phone proves phone. that you don't need to. <laughs> what is and I would believe that a Gen 2 would have something like water resistance, but I, I, I don't think the iPhone proves anything. It's its own ecosystem. Like it's a totally different reality for the iPhone. Well, right. But what I'm saying is, is if you're going to emulate any kind of success, I think it's, it, it is not possible for them to emulate the, the slow build success of a one plus. I think it is far more likely that they can, uh, that they can create some new tier or niche based on luxury premium, like other manufacturers are trying to make all rounders. See, that's, but, that's but, here's, but here's the thing though, is- I think ultimately they fail either way and that by, by year three of Essential, it's carved up for parts. Yeah, but here's that, the thing though, is that like Sam says, okay. the, the reality of Samsung in, a, in an ecosystem called Android, it right. doesn't matter what Apple does. So they have to look at their ecosystem and say, how do we become that premium here? That is, and again, your name is essential, right? Right. Well, so you must match your name. You can't. Hey, you cannot name something and go away from it. It, it has a screen. That's essentially like the most important. Uh, 
know what is heaven. It's a phone. <laughs> it makes phone calls. Come on. What more do you want? I think what they really should do is maybe look at, you know, a central phone. Maybe they should maybe they should really look at the next phone and really integrate it with Amazon as best they can. Maybe that's I, I, I mean again Amazon they have so much phone. They have so much money from partners like Amazon. I, I wholly expect that, that yeah, that's going to be. Amazon has an essential brand of products. So why not offer an essential phone with those brand of products with it? And, then, I mean, and so this is from uh, Manuel. Crap, but at least it'll be something that's good that they can at least know. And they'll have some big name like Amazon pushing it to the forefront. For so, so again, with Amazon, if Amazon's on board and the Amazon can give it sort of front page status on their phone sales page, um, this is from Manuel in the chat. Uh, Apple, say, Apple sells a simple design and tells you what it can do for the market versus specs. I think Essential could do something similar, again, with every expectation. And this is going back to what Andy Rubin was talking about in his early interviews is even just through the manufacturing, they were never going to be, you know, breaking down sales records or anything like that on their first generation phone. But I think they completely missed the conversation with people who would be emotionally swayed by Andy Rubin being the father of Android and sidekick and his relationships, you know, with other tech manufacturers in the past that, you know, all the core DNA of what makes your phone, your phone was sort of, you know, was it created by this guy and now he's making a phone which is titanium and ceramic you know like those words mean something to people who are into fancy watches you know i they 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 went after sort of a rational conversation about why you should buy their phone they needed to walk away from all of that they needed to make it an emotional argument and i think they would have found their little boutique niche and from that they could have built on and they probably would have been more successful building on that than going after ultra high specs at ultra low price which we all know is unsustainable no company has been able to sustain that they've all had to pivot mainstream or mass market or raise their price so that that to me is like i ultimately think again like danny was saying i ultimately think this company is not long for this world but if they have any chance at succeeding as a solo entity i think it's get people emotionally excited about it don't try and play the specs game opposite companies like samsung because you'll lose that fight every single time and see if you can't create some sort of apple meets virtu for the world of android and i think you've got some hope not not that i think it's realized but i think you have some hope for the future yeah um another new topic hopey feely right there man from hope i know right a lot of hope feel <laughs> I mean, this is not worse. Not a lot of hope, just a little. All right. Um, reports are Microsoft is developing a foldable tablet in the vein of the Courier. Was, I was just going to say, just like a Courier. Yeah. Um, reports that this will be running an ARM processor, so Qualcomm chipset in there. Um, and um, uh, Microsoft is not positioning this against Android or iOS, but it's more of a... I guess Surface Note, Surface Journal, this might be their in-between device. I mean, if the software runs like the way the journal, so, uh, the courier software ran in that, that demo they had that was leaked years ago, that would be really cool, uh, I think. But thoughts, guys, what do you think? Wow, silence. Okay, uh, Sam, it's Sam, it's Sam who uses the pen. <laughs> uh, realistically, the only thing I can think about is they, they have to fix, they, they have to find a place to put that that you know uh, pared down version of Windows 10. <laughs> that's the only thing I can think about. Yeah, that Windows 10s they try to force on the people. Oh yes, yeah, the Windows 10 s That's what it's called. Yeah, they have to figure out a, a place to put it, and that's a good. That might be a good device. But uh, I, I like styluses and I like pens, um, and I like being able to write on um, on a device. But I don't like. I still don't see what the use of a of you know a dual screen device would be. The this surface. Is a, no, 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 guy, guy. This is a book, a digital book. Oh, I'm sorry. Right, a digital book Flip with two screens. Pages. And when you when you close it, you look like you're serious, thoughtful. Yeah. Even though you've been doodling on there for about ten minutes. Yeah. I mean, or a bunch of smiley faces. That's bad with me, though. Really, my video would be destroyed. Like, or writing your name multiple times. I write it under E all the time. Drawing three D, three D lettering. 
Yeah. Like you did in high school. <laughs> do that weird S thing. Yeah. That, mm-hmm. And doing or try to throw Superman S's in different ways. Oh, okay, I'm just going to stop. Now I'm giving away all my tricks. <laughs> <laughs> See, well, Danny's, Danny's screaming there that, dude, this would be incredible. Danny, please tell us why would it be incredible? Because right here, everyone's kind of like, eh, it's cool, at least, you know. In a no, I, I, I won't <laughs> disagree that I think it's cool. To, it's what I'm concerned about. You is... have no idea if they're really going to support this thing when they put yeah. it out. If it's under the surface line, it will be supported. If it's not under the surface line. And, it's and, 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 and you just mentioned Windows 10S. That's the other problem with it. That, no, I don't think it's going to become Windows 10S. I don't. I, 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 the traction for Windows 10S, once <laughs> OUM, remember they announced OEM devices, Usually OEMs after the announcement have a Christmas push for these devices. They are none, they are no statements, which means OEMs have just told Microsoft, we're not doing it. No. Yeah. Well, because half the time, it, all the Surface laptops come with it, and, and immediately people just upgrade, because you can do it for free. You'd immediately go, I don't want this, and then they upgrade to, to, to S, and it's done in like 10 minutes, and you have the regular operating system. There's no point of them. S is legitimately just a skin on top of Windows 10. Well, that will be good for so something it's like, like a saran wrap that's around package, it's, and it's you got to <laughs> unbox your operating system to actually well, well, get real stuff. That's that's be a skin. It look what it is is literally it's like it's like a stop blocker saying you just can't run this. <laughs> the, the, the it's a saran just, wrap around the package. <laughs> that's what it is. Uh, but Danny is saying the software would be everything on this. I mean, Danny. I mean, can you elaborate, bro? Because you're just making this sound like like short statement. This would be great. Software would be everything. Everything on it. Yeah, I think the 10s would be a good um, would be a, a, a good OS to have on this because for something like this you don't need full blown Windows. Yeah, you, do. you really would. I hope you wouldn't need full blown Windows on, on something like this. What to me would be the real killer feature on this is how it integrates with other Windows services like your OneNote. If it could be Windows 10 as but still make sure it runs full blown like OneNote, that might be a selling um, a selling point. You know. Okay, so I, I guess I'm I, I'm kind of cranky and old. Um, yeah. What, what I yeah. Get off my lawn. A little I bit. Know, man. Oh, kids, hey. Slapping companies left and right, man. You take my role, man. Come on. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm I, I'm feeling it this week. Uh, <laughs> About the rant I, I guess back, so. I guess where I'm because again, this this thing doesn't even really exist. I mean, we're looking at a picture of the courier. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. talking yeah. about it, and I would want to see how it's implemented, but. It's the same skepticism I have with like dual screen phones. I'm I'm curious what where where in the market have we been looking for expandable screen real estate devices um, that that there there's a real opportunity. Oh, I'll show you the market. Not, I'll be right back. Just keep talking. Yeah, yeah. The, other, where, the other places is, that other thing real... happened that time where I was like I needed two screens, but. It wasn't really sure if I wanted it as a phone or as an actual device, no, 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 or maybe no, no. I was dreaming. Why, I wasn't why, really why. sure. I'm making the mistake. <laughs> this is the market for a dual screen phone. Okay. Oh, right. God, that's, 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 a, that's a fictional universe that I don't know that I want to live in. If it's on film, it existed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I understand. But but I, I kind of feel like a lot of this is is in the same is, is in the same kind of realm as something like modular phones where it's cool. I'm not saying it's not cool, but I'm not seeing where it really does legitimately solve some kind of use case that that people have without it just being sort of like, this is something that's cool. And, you know, kind of in the same way that the tablet market has sort of plateaued, you know, we're going to getting into these sort of mixed usage devices, tablet mm-hmm. PCs, you know, like that, that, that solves some real issues. Um, I, I don't know that the dual screen phone or the foldable tablet is in the same necessary area as, as I think a lot of us are also hoping that we'll be starting to peel some of these services off into other displays too. I think the ability to throw content from my phone directly to a computer monitor and use that in a more desktop style environment is more valuable to me than a phone that unfolds to be sort of a mediocre tablet. Um, a tablet that you know can also be a real computer and dock and use like real graphics cards and real computer hardware and then just becomes more of like a a regular tablet when i pull it out of that dock is more valuable to me than a tablet that folds in half True. so those those are the kind of things like i i just 
what, what issues are we really addressing here? Because we've got some amazing engineering. I think it's going to be cool, but I don't know that cool really sells problems more than just it being cool. And I don't think you can really build a market. I mean, I, I think, I think, I, know, uh, totally agree. I mean, for Microsoft, they have to come up with, that's if they make this true, whatever the case. Hold on, hold on, I just saw something. In. No, Danny, you're paying ten fifty for this Pixel two phone. They, they haven't even fixed it to Excel discussion. In the chat. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, if if you are Microsoft, if you can show three very solid use case scenarios, then I think you at least get people to understand what this device is. Um, to me, I kind of see this as this would have been a great device as a, like going back to Sam's point of Windows 10S, Windows 10S Surface Student, whatever you want to call it, right? This is that book that you take to school that you can actually use as a computing device. You can write and solve problems. Um, you can use it in that case scenario and it only costs maximum 500 bucks. Okay. To me, because it's running, of course, a Qualcomm chipset. Like that is that kind of scenario I can see it or you know, where it works out well. Like I don't know what, I'm not the engineer there um, at Microsoft. They probably have other cool ways of interpreting what this device, this fictional device could probably you know, turn on to, which is why I referred to Westworld because this device doesn't exist. And you know, <laughs> that's the only reason why I pointed that out. Fair enough. You know, yeah, exactly. Thank you very much, man. There are a myriad of things that, that Microsoft could do with this device to make it not a phone, not a tablet, into its own unique device. But the thing is, is Microsoft actually willing to do something like that? And to me, the answer is no. I don't think Microsoft's willing to do something like that because this could be a really cool device if you want to really go out there and think all the crazy things that can do with current technology in this device. Yes, yes, right? yes, yes. You know, if this device comes with a, a with a braggy like wireless headset, it could have a phone antenna in it. It could, you know, could use a stylus to take notes, and you could watch a video on one while you're taking notes on one notes on the other. Yeah. You could you could imagine everything, but would Microsoft is Microsoft willing, or have they actually shown recently that they're willing to? Um, <laughs> well, so I mean that's like that's this. a cool hypothetical. Is like I can I can take <clears throat> notes and watch a movie at the same time. So really think about where where is this thing going to fold? Is it going to fold horizontally or is it going to fold vertically? It's going to fold if it's a if it's like it's going to fold like a book, right? So yeah, you're going to prop up two portrait oriented screens to take notes on one and watch. A landscape film in portrait mode on the other, on the other yeah. or are you going to, to prop one screen up in landscape and have one screen flat so that then you're looking down yeah. at your notes and looking up at the film i mean again we can come up with hypothetical there are cool things to do but like what how, how is exactly what is this really i can't for? imagine an actual consumer facing product which is going to be able to solve what you're talking about better than if i just have one really nice display that I split screen and have my notes on one side and the film on the other, which I can do on a phone, I can do on a tablet, I can do on a Surface, I can do on an iPad. I can do it on my Note 8 right now. Um, but no, I'm just saying, at the end of the day, I, I totally agree with you. This dual, dual screens, I don't get it. I, I still don't get it. I don't think it's something that's gonna, um, that's actually going to happen or gonna, it's going to stick. But I disagree with you on modular phones, but with that sort of, an aside, but yeah, no, dual screens, to me, it's, it's a, oh, it's a solution looking for a problem. Phones, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a solution looking for a problem. Uh, At the same way. damn time, I want to be able to do a calendar and an email at the same damn time. Calendar well, and but you can. Yeah. 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 I mean, look, anyway, we'll have to just wait and see. Um, so yeah, I think we're at the end of the show while Danny, <laughs> <laughs> Danny's in full rant mode. Danny, Danny, Danny is just giving a beautiful Danny's lecture on, on Pixel 2 XL in the chat. Uh, thank you very much, man. Danny's like, he can't recommend the Pixel 2 XL on principle because he believes um, uh, Google is getting away with murder. Uh, yeah. Let me actually, sorry, let me, let me actually state it properly. I can't recommend the Pixel 2 XL because of principle. Google is getting away with murder. I did say it properly. My bad. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, we've got a part of the show where we talk about what we have on our channels and what we can expect um, next week. I'm going to start off with Mr. Warren Bowman. Oh, you here. Put me on the spot while we still have camera battery. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so what I have up on the channel now, I have the my Pixel 2 X for first impression review on it. And yeah, about the first five minutes is going to be me ranting on the display. So just expect to kind of see that. Please don't be triggered by that if you're an Apple fan. I mean, I'm going to have a Pixel fanboy. Watch the rest of the video. Wow, he's so uh, used to calling it. out Apple fans. Listen to that. <laughs> uh, like the last, like the last four rank videos have been basically me calling out Apple fans. <laughs> um, I have that up uh, next week. Uh, I plan to try to get this uh, sort of a final review overview of the Pixel 2 XL um, and some other uh, cool videos coming up as well too that I, I can't remember off the top of my head right now. Mr. Juan Bagnell. Uh, so we just had our second episode of Newegg now from Newegg Studios. So that was a lot of fun. We're going to have another, uh, we're going to have another show this coming Thursday and our partners are iBuyPower and Gigabyte. So we should have some cool gear to show off for that broadcast uh, for some gadget guy. I finally got my review done on the Trend Labs uh, Nova wireless earbuds. Um, not a bad set of truly wireless uh, earbuds for $80, a really great charge case, uh, can also charge your phone, um, and, and pretty good specs all considered that they're half the price of a set of AirPods. So that's on Gadget Guy and on VidMe. And uh, I have another episode of MYMHM recovered, and we're talking sports films. Uh, this is from a while back. So I've got crazy, bushy, almost Keanu Reeves-like hair in... Uh, uh, John Wick, Keanu Reeves like hair in uh, in this uh, in this episode, but that should be going uh, live probably in about an hour. Nice, all right, cool. Uh, Sam, what are you working on? I don't know. Um, <laughs> the, the, the Ionic, yes, the Ionic. Uh, no, I was actually looking for it. I was like, uh, <laughs> it's on my desk. Uh, the Ionic and. Um, that's about it, right? Oh yeah, we still have to do the uh, the the bed. Yes, right. We still have to do that. That's yeah, about it. Uh, we got our new mattress tech coming up. Yeah. Well. Um, how you, how you gonna break that in, Sam? How you gonna break that in, Sam? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Well, I have slept on it for a while now, and uh, it, it seems to be broken into with a lot of sleep. I have, I have slept quite well on it. I'm glad to hear it. Sleep is very important. Wow. wow. That, is, that is just righteous. So we had to change cameras because the Panasonic G7, which I was using, giving us that crispy look. We look at foggy. Yeah, I know, right? Like My bad. Past game. Like with the past game. Ah. See that's bad. There we yeah, go. Look a little bit um, that, that camera just that's died. Like three to twenty-eight. Yeah. Um, but on on my end, I'm trying to pull up my videos to see <laughs> what I have this week. Uh, yeah, we had uh, uh, Daniel dropped uh, his review of the Acer Predator G6. Did he stop playing games with the yeah, with, <laughs> with the GTX 1080 Ti. So this video of mine used to be out like three weeks ago. Homeboy has just been playing games on it because he can do it on 4K and enjoy. He's, I'm like, where's the video, Danny? I was like, it's coming, man. But this, this rig is coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, really. I promise it really is coming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then uh, we also have our review of the, uh, obviously, I call it the simplest way to back up your phone. It's a sponsored video from uh, Meme. It's a cable that uh, charges your iPhone and backs it up automatically. So for those of you who are super lazy in backing up your device, all you have to do is just charge it at night and it backs it up for you. That's it, done. You don't have to do anything else. Um, and then uh, Microsoft sent us the Xbox One X. Check out our massive unboxing. It was a, a reviewer's kit, so there's a lot of stuff in there, which is cool. I was uh, excited and surprised. I was really happy. For some reason, I just keep hearing buzz every time you're talking about this Xbox One X. I wonder why. Why? Oh, well, I don't know. Just keep keep going, keep going. Yeah, yeah, it was it's pretty. Cool. Why is the DMX sponsor in the X either? I don't even understand. It's like, <laughs> how, how is it fair that you have a Xbox One X in your apartment? That's just not even right. Here, this is his yeah. year. products with him. It should are here. I just, I'm just gonna phase all this part of this whole conversation out with the whole Xbox One X because I don't want to have to hate you for this. So I'm just gonna phase no, I mean, all of that I mean, out. You're getting yours. Yeah. Like next week, man. Like, oh, no, man. not next week, man. On the freaking seventh, okay. On the freaking seventh. Wow. I mean, wow. like, wow. I gotta wait. Wow. I gotta wait. Wow. Okay. 
I mean, like, <laughs> like yo, chill, bro. I mean, I thought we're friends, man. We've been friends for a while, right? I'm just gonna stop. I'm just gonna stop. I'm just gonna stop. But why do you have the Xbox One X, man? Just explain this to me. Just look, explain this to me. G- All right, me. How about that? Will that work? Okay, that kind of works. Perturbed. <laughs> 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 no, no. Actually, no. Sam's perturbed that he can't get the Xbox One X in white. Right now, he has this oh, aesthetic God, of that white. That's really console. irking me, man. <laughs> so he's very pissed that when he gets it. It's going to be Pro different. Pro come in white. PS4 Pro then come in white. Yeah, it's a PS4 Pro in white. There is that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I have and a white PS4 Pro and I have a white yeah, Xbox One yeah. 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 X. Just get a, get a D-brand scan yeah. or colorware and, and, and stop. Yeah, D-brand. Just D-brand. It's D-branded, man. And, uh, and then uh, we also have our review of the uh, Alcatel Idol 5 uh, by Adam. Um, you check it out. Solid budget phone, 199 Um So that's, that's up there. Next week, um, iPhone's coming out next week, right? Is, right, the third? The third, yeah. Yeah, so. I mean, if, if Apple's actually going to ship them, I suppose that is when people will. Have yeah, next, iPhones. yeah, next Friday, you know, iPhone stuff, we'll get that. Um, we've got some embargoed stuff coming up next week. You guys should pay attention, check out, can talk about it. Uh, some more Xbox videos, you guys will see. Um, and later on this afternoon, my 72-hour review of the uh, Pixel 2 XL will be dropping as well. So you guys can check that out and what? see my thoughts. Um, at this point, I want to thank everyone for chiming in. Uh, everyone chiming in the chat, thank you very much. Danny, thank you for running a discussion hunt over there. Yeah. Uh, it was great. Uh, Ronald, thanks for all the input. Everyone, seriously. Um, Good show. Thank you guys for, for chatting, as well as you know our regular host on the show, Mr. Juan Bagnell. You can find him uh, on Some Gacha Guy. That is his personal channel. Where else can we find you, Juan? Uh, Vidme, uh, Newegg Studios. So uh, our broadcast is on the Newegg channel and I do my phone reviews on Pocket Now. And Vidme is uh, our movie review show. And I, I might I, I might be trying to join you guys in, you know, doing like a little let's play gaming stuff. I'm gonna talk with Trisha Hershberger about helping get me up to speed on Twitch. So I'm hoping I'll have some legit Twitch stuff to start sharing soon. Ah, cool. All right, Mr. Warren Bowman, where can people find you? They can find me at bw1.com, uh, bw B-W-O-T-C-O-N. You can find me on if you just Google that BW1, you find me all on YouTube. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all sorts of places. So you can find me up on there. All right, cool. And uh, Sam, you can find him. Uh, he's part of the Border Work Network. His Twitter handle is Black Iron underscore Man. Yeah, man. Sam is Iron Man, just the black version. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's not. <laughs> they already have one now. Her name's Riri. Copyright infringement. <laughs> and uh, and of course it's board at work for me so you can uh, find me on board at work YouTube Twitter Instagram all social networks and also our website boardatwork.com thank you very much guys for sorry I keep looking at this camera yeah. uh, thank you very much guys for, for watching and uh, we'll see you next week uh, when we of course have uh, some more stuff join us again 12pm Eastern Time or 9am Pacific on Saturdays this is Thunder E saying thank you and always enjoy your entertainment. Damn.